Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Today we're looking at a data set of uh, the top 50 Spotify songs from 2019. And we're going to try to predict um, here at the, let me select all the columns. We're going to predict the popularity of a song based on these uh, 12 features, or at least some of them. So uh, let's hop into the notebook and I'm just going to uh, import the usual things. So Actually, let me just copy them in. And I also have uh, this uh, markdown block, task for today, song popularity prediction, given data about the top 50 Spotify songs from 2019. Let's try to predict whether a given song will be more or less popular. And the reason I say more or less is because uh, we're not going to try to predict song popularity based on this metric. Uh, the higher the value is, the more popular the song is. What we're going to do is we're going to bin this variable into 0 and 1, where 0 will mean less popular and 1 will be more popular. This will just make it a little easier for us, especially since um, this looks like more of a regression problem. And um, there's nothing wrong with regression, it's very useful, but uh, for the purposes of this kind of video, it's very hard to gauge how regression uh, is performing without some sort of something to compare it to. Whereas if we do classification, we get a, a rough sense of like, the actual performance just based on the accuracy metric. All right, and so you can see we'll be, oh, actually this is wrong. We will not be using a TensorFlow artificial neural network. We will be using five different models to make our predictions, to make our predictions. All right, and you can see these five models are right here. We're gonna be using logistic regression, k-nearest neighbors, a decision tree, um, MLP classifier or neural network and a support vector machine. And um, I'm using Plotly Express for visualization and these uh, standard scalar and train test split for pre-processing. So I'll just go ahead and import that. And we're gonna load our data in using pandas.readcsv. And we can grab the file path right over here for the CSV file, copy that, paste it right in here. And uh, sometimes we'll get this error. Uh, the way to, f to get around this is you just to specify the encoding as Latin 1. And we can check the data. And we can see we have, uh, all right. So we have a good number of features, I think, but we also have a very few examples. There's only 50 examples here because it, it's the top 50 songs, right? So what that means is there's not a lot of data to train a model on. So hopefully we'll still be able to get some good results, um, but we want to try to get as much as many features out of this as possible. Now there's two here that are definitely not helping us, which is these two. These are, I mean, obviously the uh, unnamed column here, this is just an uh, index column, and it's not doing anything to contribute uh, information, except actually, <laughs> it's actually cheating if we use this column, because this is the actual rank of the song. so. It, the, the model could easily learn that anything over 25 uh, is going to be uh, less popular and anything under 25 is going to be more popular. So we're going to remove that. We're going to remove this as well because track name, we could technically use the individual words in the title of a song as features, but we're not going to do that just because it would take a long time and I don't think we'd get much um, increased performance. Maybe if we had more data, this would be a useful thing to do. But because we only have 50 songs, I doubt there are very, very many uh, words that are repeated in here um, that will be able to contribute to how popular a song is. Uh, for the artist name, uh, we actually will use this as a feature because there are repeated artists. You can see Ed Sheeran pulls up twice. Um, I think uh, Billie Eilish as well. And Marshmallow here twice. There might be more, I'm not sure. Oh yeah, there's Ed Sheeran again. Um, we're just going to one hot encode this column and hope that that can contribute to our d our model's performance as well. For genre, uh, we will also one hot encode the genre column. Uh, that makes sense. There's a finite number of ca of uh, unique values there, and then all of these are already numerical, so we don't have to worry about encoding them. All right, so let's get started. Um, 
can we get some preliminary information for this for this uh, data set because it's so small this isn't really giving us much that we didn't already know there's three object columns so three uh, non-numerical columns and there are no null values uh, it would be unfortunate if there were null values and we only had 50 examples <laughs> but um, yeah let's uh, start pre-processing so we're gonna do what we said we're gonna drop these uh, first two unnamed zero and track name and I'm not sure if we can actually grab the name using that let's see if I can oh no we can alright so data dot drop unnamed zero and the other one is track name track dot name and we're gonna drop it from axis one And then we should be dealing with the actual data set we'll be using. So, like I said, these are going to be one hot encoded. And then this thing, popularity, which is what we're trying to predict, we're going to uh, quantile cut it into two bins, one for low popularity, one for high popularity. And of course, these are already very popular songs, so we're not really saying is the song popular or not. We're just asking is the song more popular or less popular. So, um, obviously they will be sort of uh, the more popular songs will tend to be at the top, near the top, I'm guessing. Actually, I'm not sure. Is is this sorted in terms of popularity? It doesn't look like it is. I mean, number one is 79. And at the bottom, we have near some 88s. So uh, I'm not sure exactly what's, what this is being sorted by. But uh, things with high values of this will become 1. With low values, will become 0. So let me do that first. Okay, so... Um, if we use the pandas qcut function, which is quantile cut, and we're going to quantile cut a column, uh, in this case popularity, we specify a number of quantiles to cut it into, this time two. And the reason we use quantile cut instead of just cut is because cut will take the data and just cut it in the middle, not care about how the data is distributed. But quantile cut will find the, the, uh, like the mean and cut there so that we have um, equal number of of um, of data points in each uh, in each bin essentially and then we'll specify labels so we could make this like less popular more popular and then it would look like this uh, each value would be assigned less popular or more popular based on the number right uh, but we're not going to use text labels because that will just we'll just have to re-encode it later. So we're going to do zero and one, and that will look like this, right? Now what we'll do is just make the uh, the column that new these new values. All right, and then we have to one hot encode these. So why don't I make markdown so encoding and now I'll just say one hot encoding. Oh no. Okay. So I'm going to make a function one hot encode. Simple function. It's going to take in a data frame column. And we could also specify a prefix. Um, in this case, I don't think it's necessary, but we'll do it anyway. So, um,. Basically, we're going to start by creating a copy of our data frame. This is to prevent modifying it in place. We want to make sure that we're modifying a fresh copy of it. Then we're going to get the dummy columns. With, uh, so we'll call it dummies. This is going to be pandas.getDummies. And uh, we're going to get the dummies for the column that we want and specify the prefix from the parameters. So uh, dummies is going to create the one hot columns that we need. So I'll show you an example. If we did this, we use genre. This is called data, and we'll use a prefix G. Then it will look like this. Each um, so this each one of these was a genre uh, before, right? One of these. So we have a country wrap. Um, we get uh, the prefix appended to the beginning of it and then 
we get ones and zeros depending on with whether a certain example contained that value in the original data. So over here, number 21 was country wrap. All right, so now 21 has a one for country wrap and a zero for all the others. All right, so we're going to do that, get that those dummies of the column that we of our choosing, and then we're going to concatenate using pandas .concat the data frame and the dummies. And we're concatenating along the column axis. When we're done, we're just going to drop the original column that we used to create the dummies. And then we'll return df. Okay, there's our function. Uh, now we're just going to call it on uh, these two columns right here, artist name and genre. So data equals, notice this is returning a whole data frame, so we'll say data equals one hot encode data genre and a prefix will give it, g works just fine. We could even give it genre as a prefix, why not? And we'll do it again uh, for, this is artist name, artist dot name, artist dot name and the prefix here we can say artist. Alright, now we take a look at data we now have 69 columns as opposed to the, uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 columns before. We now have 69 and uh, all the ones at the end are one hot. So you can see these are all the individual artists. Then somewhere in here we'll have the uh, genres and then we have the original columns that were already numerical here. And popularity has been encoded to be zeros and ones. So now we're ready to uh, split and scale, so splitting and scaling. I include these together because they sort of go hand in hand. Y is going to be what we're trying to predict. That's going to be popularity. So data.loc popularity, and I use the dot loc here uh, because it creates a fresh slice of the data frame. So any th changes we make to Y will not be reflected in the original data frame. Uh, Oh yeah, and actually I have to say all rows and popularity column. And then X is going to be data.drop popularity from the uh, axis one. All right, we've split the data into Y and X. And we're going to scale X using standard scalar. This is imported from sklearn. X equals scalar.fittransform X. So what this will do is we'll scale each um, column in X. So X is just everything except the popularity column. It's going to scale each column to be centered with a mean at zero and to have unit variance. So variance one and mean zero for every column. And uh, so we'll run that. And then we're going to split the uh, set further into train and test sets. So x train, x test, y train, y test, using the train test split function from sklearn, and we'll specify a train size of 70%, and we'll and a random state of uh, this can be any number. Let's just do 20, and we include this so that we can reproduce the results if we ever wanted to. Um, and uh, yeah, right. So this this uh, function shuffles the data, so the random state is going to shuffle in a predictably random order. It's random, but we could always do it the same way by using the same random state. Okay, so now modeling and training. All right, so we're gonna make five models, uh, like I said before, uh, and we're gonna compare the results of each one. So let's do it this way. I'm gonna make five lines. I'm gonna write underscore model equals and we're going to input each one this is uh, well I'll put this first logistic regression is our first then we'll do uh, k nearest neighbors so k neighbors classifier uh, we'll do oh, I realize I actually have six here don't I okay um, decision tree for our third one uh, MLP classifier. This is just a multi-layer perceptron or neural network. And a support vector machine. 
for support vector classifier. So that we'll call this one log, this one KNN, this one DEC, this one MLP, this one SVM. All right, so we'll set those up. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna fit each one. So we can just grab this, copy it, paste it, then uh, dot fit uh, X train, Y train. All right, and then, so I'll, I'll fit it. They've all trained. It's very fast, but we have very little data. And then um, we can do this. We're gonna make accuracy values for each one. It's going to be uh, each one dot score, X test, Y test. So this is storing the result of each one in the corresponding accuracy uh, value. So then we're gonna print out the results and just for the sake of time, I'll copy paste this. Uh, we have, we're just gonna print the name of the model with accuracy and then the accuracy value after it. I'm gonna get the accuracies. And before I print this, I'm also going to output um, a graph, a plotly graph, plotly express dot uh, bar, the bar chart, and we'll call it fig. Uh, we're going to plot on the X. So X is going to be um, the names of all these. And for again, for the sake of time, I'll just copy and paste this. So just each one. And then Y is going to be uh, the, the accuracies. So log accuracy, KNN accuracy, DEC accuracy, MLP accuracy, and SVM accuracy. And it's just important that these match up in order. And then for color, so I'm just gonna make sure that each one is color coded separately. I'll just use the same um, color labels as the X labels. And then I'm actually gonna specify the X and Y labels. X is going to be, uh, we'll say model. And Y is going to be um, accuracy. I will give it a title, Model Accuracy Comparison. All right, then fig.show, and let's see the results. So I'll print it here, and then we'll run it there. And you can see, um, okay, some of them, our best performances come from logistic regression and support vector machine. And we didn't really customize any of these. I just left them with the default parameters, uh, but um, yeah, a decision tree did the worst with the accuracy of 40%. Uh, logistic regression and support vector machine did the best with an identical accuracy of 73%. But it's important to note that um, at this point, like the difference between these two could be like one misclassified example because we have so such little data. If we look at the size of our test set, it's actually only 15 examples that were creating these accuracy metrics from. But uh, I think that is a, a decent um, analysis of our models. And uh, I think that sums up today's video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell uh, for more content and leave any comments in the section below for any suggestions you might have for the channel. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.